Okay. Three waiting. Uh, how? Oh, there we go. Okay. I think it started. Um, I guess maybe we should wait for a few moments to see if anybody pops in. Hey. Well, it's it's five oh one. Do you think we should just start? Yeah. I wish I could speak to the people who are watching. <laughs> Well, okay, I'll share my screen. I'll start sharing my screen. But people can start commenting? Yes. Where are they listening, listening us from? All right, can you, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, it's 5.01. Uh, I, I guess we're gonna start. Um, yeah. So if you have any comments at any time, please feel free to write in the comment section on our YouTube Live and uh, then we, we can answer any questions that you have at the end of our presentation. Um, first of all, I wanna say thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining us for our first ever My Ocean Story. Uh, this is the first of our mini series of lectures, uh, about 15 to 20 minutes long hosted by Ocean Minded, myself, Christine Sortini, and Fondacion Coracol, Claudia Hurtado. Um, thank you so much, thanks for joining us. So our series that we want to share with you, My Ocean Story, we're gonna be gathering people from around the world, different walks of life, different jobs, um, different ways of connecting with the ocean. And we're asking them three questions. And those questions are, one, what does the ocean mean to you? Two, how does that flow into your day-to-day -day life? And three, what do you wish the world understood about the ocean? Or what is, what is the message that you want to uh, send to others about the ocean? So to start off today, we thought we would introduce ourselves, our inspiration for this mini-series, and give you our question. Um, so to start off, I'm Christine Stortini. I'm a marine biologist from Halifax, Nova Scotia. That's where I did my undergrad, uh, master's, and PhD degrees in marine biology. I'm now living in Montreal, Quebec. Um, my ocean story, I think, starts quite a few generations ago. So I'm half Italian and half Dutch, and the Italian side of my family comes from a small fishing village. And the Dutch side of my family, uh, comes from a town very close to the ocean as well. And my my grandmother on my mother's side from Holland was a swimmer um, and she wanted her ashes to be spread in the ocean because that's where she felt most at peace. Um, so the Italian and the Dutch sides of my family moved to Northern Ontario in Canada, uh, the Italian side after the First World War and the Dutch side after the Second World War. And so I grew up on the Great Lakes and I had a very strong connection with water. I was swimming as much as I could. Um, that was my favorite place to be. And I eventually developed sort of a, a fascination with the ocean and begged my mom to take me to California uh, for Christmas one year. And that's when my journey towards being a marine biologist really started. But when I was younger, I spent a lot of my time uh, building up my my breath power to try to hold my breath as long as I could underneath the water and opening my eyes so that I could see what was around me and sort of feel uh, at one with the water and um, feel like I was in a different world. And that that feeling or, or that activity has um, come with me throughout the rest of my life. Um, so then after going to California when I was in high school, uh, developing a fascination with surfing and scuba diving, getting my scuba certification uh, in uh, Lake Ontario, <laughs> um, 
I went to university to study marine biology in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And that's where I, my knowledge of the ocean really grew. And I started to understand how the ocean is the life force of our planet and why it is so important. Um, so what does the ocean mean to me? Well, it means, um, it means everything to me. Uh, it's, it's part of, it's the biggest driving force of my life. Um, it's what drove me into the career that I am currently in. Um, it is the place where I feel most at peace. It is the place that I go to come back to myself and to feel more connected to the earth. Um, when I go on vacation anywhere, it is around being uh, closer to the ocean. I love to travel for scuba diving and surfing. Um, I try to be in the ocean as often as I possibly can. And so now Claudia will tell her ocean story. Hi, everybody. So my ocean story, Christine, can you go next, please? Yep. So I am also a marine biologist from Universidad Jorge Tadeo Lozano in Bogota. And my connection to the ocean started at a very young age. Uh, my parents encouraged me um, to go to the sea, the love of nature, and they used to take me to a lot of natural places to see the wonders of our country. So I did a master's in uh, conservation biology in Australia and New Zealand. And while I was there, I collaborated with different organizations, uh, such as Sea Shepherd, um, Greenpeace, Island Bay Marine Education Center, um, working to protect the oceans and to create a stewardship towards them. Uh, so next, please. So for me, the ocean, uh, as Christine, it means everything. But um, I think the thing that I like most about the ocean is the adventure. Uh, I love to go diving, to go kayaking, swimming. And I just like to look at the beautiful um, landscape. Um, it's a source of knowledge as well. As marine biologist, I don't know if I born with that, but every time I go to the sea, I wonder so many things. And so for me, it's like a source of, um, of knowledge, as I said before. So um, it also means peacefulness and beauty. Uh, so when I go to the ocean, even just to see it, you smell it, like I can smell it and, and, and hear it, and it makes me feel at peace. Uh, when I go diving, for example, I forget about everything else and just seeing the amazing colors and life that thrives in those places brings me happiness. Next. So in my daily life, I don't have kind of a easy access to the ocean in the place I am currently living. So we know that many of the issues that our oceans are facing right now and that have been facing for a long time now is that uh, there are a lot of inland issues that, for example, pollution is one of them. So I try to reduce, reuse and recycle as much as I can. I create awareness in social networks, on the press, on the radio, in person with other people, with family. Um, I educate children to think about their impact on the planet and how they can change it positively. And something that I love is to make partnerships uh, with people that have the same goal and to um, and that feel that they are agents of change. So for me, that is really important because if we are a lot, a lot of us can do a lot for the planet. So next. So with the Fundación Coral Col, we have done in one year a lot of things. Uh, this year we will be doing some more. And if you follow us in our social networks, you have um, Prime News. So in this past year, we have done a river cleanup. Uh, we know that the garbage that we throw in the city ends up in the sea. So for us, it's very important to keep our water uh, sources clean. Um, we have doing uh, we have been doing a lot of workshops with kids online, of course, because of the COVID. 
but they have uh, been learning about recycling, reusing, like the kid you can see in the, on the screen with a little piggy bank. He made it from a plastic bottle. Uh, other kids participate in our, um, in our workshops, drawing, painting, and always our workshops have some kind of lesson for them to learn. Uh, we participate in uh, planting days, which are really important. And we do bi-monthly talks about different environmental issues, including ocean uh, issues like pollution, um, carbon footprint, um, and different topics. So um, basically, we have done that, done all of these things until now, and we will keep doing any more, some more things with Christine, hopefully. <laughs> so you can go next, please. So how my love for the ocean transfers into my day to day, uh, like Claudia, I work in ocean conservation. My day job is in ocean conservation and I feel very grateful that every day I get to think about the ocean and different ways to conserve it. Um, and like Claudia, I try my best to compost, recycle, uh, use less single use plastic, bring my to go mug uh, or make my coffee at home. I also enjoy spreading awareness about the ocean and my love for it and the importance of the ocean to everybody in my life. <laughs> um, and also through my organization, Ocean Minded, um, through which I'm collaborating with Claudia. Uh, I've had a chance to work on a lot of really cool and different conservation projects around the world. Um, the most interesting of which was I, I got to spend three months in Costa Rica working with sea turtles. Um, through Ocean Minded, I've been spreading awareness to uh, youth. Um, I've been really uh, um, grateful to be able to do annual presentations to grades four to six in Toronto Montessori schools in Toronto, um, teaching their ocean biome uh, section. So teaching them not only about the oceanography, biology and ecology of the ocean, but also about the issues that face the ocean and how they um, in whatever walk of life that they may be in, or regardless of what career they choose, and regardless of whether they live on, uh, on the coast or inland, what they can do in their everyday lives to help, uh, help the ocean. Um, and like I said before, I try to connect with the ocean um, on a personal level as often as I can through things like surfing and scuba diving. Um, so Claudia and I have worked in a lot of different places around the world um, throughout the progression of our careers. We have both uh, done schooling and worked in many different places and, um, and traveled to do that. And one of the people that we were fortunate enough to travel with uh, on a lot of those journeys was our mutual friend, Emma. Um, in 2014, Emma passed away and when she passed away, Claudia and I um, were connected uh, through our grief, uh, but we soon found out that we had uh, the same passion and the same mission. And so we began collaborating and we have been collaborating ever since. Um, and so our collaboration is sort of a, a, not only a part of our personal missions, but also our way of um, continuing the legacy of our friend who also had an amazing connection to the earth um, and she, she did a lot of really important conservation work in Canada and elsewhere. Um, so Claudia and I both have these passion projects on the side. Uh, so we, we are working nine to five jobs in marine conservation during um, Monday to Friday, but she runs Coral Coal and I run Ocean Minded in our spare time um, because we're so passionate about spreading awareness. Um, we're both marine biologists. So we both have this sort of innate um, connection with the ocean and love for it. And we both have these international networks because of the international work and schooling that we've done. Um, so on top of our day jobs, we wanted a way to support the ocean, the human ocean connection in a bigger way um, because it's so important to us. And we both feel that the way forward, the way to best protect our ocean is if more people around the planet feel that connection that we feel, that passion that we feel. Um, so we have been collaborating to create ocean education materials, and we thought it would be a good idea to start this My Ocean Story mini lecture series to share our international networks with you. 
um, and share with you the stories of some really inspirational people that are connected to the ocean in many different ways. Um, so with, uh, with that, we are presenting our two next speakers. So every two weeks, we will be letting you know who's coming up next. Uh, so on June 19th, you will be hearing from Francisca Elmer. She's a research fellow studying corals and climate change at the Center for Marine Resource Studies in South Caicos, Turcos, and Caicos Islands. She's also the co-host and executive producer of a really amazing podcast called Sargasm Podcast. Look it up. Uh, and then on June 3rd, you'll be hearing from Carlos Correa. He's a freediving instructor and owner of Delfinas Freediving Club in Colombia. And he's a freediving ambassador for Cressy as well. So these two people will have some really amazing and inspiring stories about the work that they do in marine conservation and their connection to the ocean. Um, and we hope that they inspire you just as much as they inspire us. So on an ending note, the final question uh, that we ask all of our speakers to, um, to present to you and to answer is what, what do you wish that the world understood about the ocean or what is your, what is your message? So our message is that we are all connected to the ocean and supported by it. Regardless of where you are, whether you live on the coast or inland, more than 70% of the oxygen that you breathe comes from the ocean. Um, you, more than 70% of the protein eaten by people around the world comes from the ocean. A lot of our medical um, products come from the ocean. So it's our duty to protect it and to spread awareness, not only of its beauty, to, per to create that connection, to foster the human ocean connection, but also about its threats and the ways that each individual can contribute to um, solving these problems. So nobody is too small, um, no, no individual is, uh, is too small to make a positive impact and to, um, to work towards saving our planet. So that is our final message. And just wanna thank you again for being here uh, for our launch, our first ever of this series. We are so excited and so grateful to have you here. Um, and we really hope that you'll be here for uh, our next upcoming speakers and to follow along. So please uh, follow us on Instagram if you want to get updates on our uh, who's coming up next and on the other work that we're doing. Hopefully we will be sharing with you some of our collaborative ocean education materials uh, probably at the end of 2021 or early 2022. And yep, just thanks so much for being here and we hope you stay tuned. And now I guess we can also open up for questions. Um, we made these talks about 45 minutes long because we wanna have 20 minute uh, talk, uh, 20 minute presentations, but then we want to open it up. And um, so I'm going to check the YouTube channel and see if there's any questions coming through. I do not see any, but I'll hold on for a few seconds. Okay, this is our this is our first ever live YouTube video for both myself and Claudia. We've never done this before. <laughs> so we're super, super uh, excited to have you here. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to message us on Instagram or comment on any of our Instagram posts. Um, oh, a question just came through. What kind of work do you guys do during your day jobs? Are you doing more hands-on experiments or more research? Claudia, do you want to go first? Yes. Um, during my day jobs, um, I work for the Ministry of the Environment here uh, for the part of fisheries. So quite connected to the ocean as well. So um, what I do is to... Um, check the sustainability of the fishing um, that is being carried out in the Colombian Pacific. And we check the people is um, complying with the norm um, in their establishment with 
commercial commercializing and all these kind of regulations that Colombia has. Um, so that's what I'm doing at the moment, but I'm also kind of working at the same time uh, with Coral Call. Um, so I develop talks and make um, field trips and contact people to be able to do projects in the city I'm living right now. So um, I think in two weeks time, uh, we will be planting a couple of trees around. Um, we have been quite slow right now because of the COVID and the social situation in Colombia right now. But as soon as that pass, we will be uh, going to the streets and doing more cleanup days at the river. And so, um, yeah, that basically Um, and oops, it just cut out for a second. <laughs> um, so I, I actually work for the government of Canada. I work for Fisheries and Oceans Canada, um, doing contract work um, and, and short term positions. Um, I've worked on topics such as um, ranking species by their local vulnerability to projected climate change. And so using that information to uh, inform fisheries management. Um, and I've worked on um, marine protected area monitoring plans. Um, so I work a lot with people who, um, who are developing and monitoring marine protected areas. Um, and I've predicted distribution shifts of species as a result of climate change, um, again, to sort of inform um, future thinking in uh, fisheries management. And, and then, yeah, on the side, I'm working with, with Claudia to, to develop ocean education materials. So, yeah, that's, that's my day today. <laughs> not, as, not super hands-on. Most of the work that I do is uh, data analysis and writing papers. So um, a lot of computer work and a lot of collaboration, which I really enjoy. I think we don't have any more questions. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we'll sign off. Um, if anybody watching does have some lingering questions at some point, please feel free to message us on Instagram, either myself at Ocean Minded Education or Claudia at Fundacion Coroco. And thanks again for being here. It's been really great. And uh, we really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your Saturday to be here with us and like ring in our My Ocean Story mini series. Thank you. See you. Bye.